Howdy again, it's uh, Tubal Cain. Today I'm uh, going to do something I'm sure you've all really waited for, and that's uh, we're going to turn a left hand or cut a left hand thread. And uh, not that you'll ever do this in three lifetimes, but just thought I'd show you anyway. It's something I don't do very often, but this is a left hand thread. I got a left hand knot here, it's kind of rounded off. And we're going to cut it in uh, Delrin plastic because it cuts uh, very freely and easily. I can do it fast, take deep cuts, and complete the whole video in short order. So I'm, I'm not going to show you every step in setting it up because that's in some of my other videos. So be sure and look at the other video on threading. I'll run through the various uh, setup steps very quickly, but if you want it in detail, go to the other video. We'll be cutting a 3 quarter 10 unified national course left hand thread. 3 quarter is the diameter, the major diameter, 10 of course is the pitch, and uh, American Thread Unified National Course, and the LH stands for left hand. Now when you're setting up your lathe, here are 8 steps you need to follow. Set the gearbox, the quick change gearbox, to uh, your number of threads per inch, which in this case is 10. Set the feed re reverse lever for a left hand thread, uh, so that it'll cut from the left to the right, that is toward the tailstock. I always like to cut uh, at slow speed, so we'll use uh, back gears at slow speed. I'm going, I'm going to use the uh, closing 12 inch lathe. Set the compound at 29 degrees and ne you need to set it to the left rather than to the right. Cross feed to zero. Make sure your tool is on center and that your threading tool is set perfectly perpendicular or square to the work and we do that with a center gauge and we're going to uh, uh, set the feed change lever if you have one to the threading position and we don't have that on the closing lathe but South Bend's and many other machines have a feed change lever that uh, you would set either at longitudinal feed cross feed or for threading because we will be using the half nut lever for threading Let's review one more time. The quick change gearbox set to 10. The headstock set for back gears. The feed reverse lever is going to be uh, set, well it's in the top position on a closing so that we can feed toward the tailstock. On my closing the speed control will be set to one of the slower speeds. Now if you have a feed change lever, and I do not, set it for the threading position. We'll be using the half nut lever. Set the cross feed at zero once you are touching the work. The compound at 29 degrees to the left because this is a 60 degree thread that we're cutting. And the uh, cutting tool Let's see if that's going to show up. Is adjusted to center, and we have used the center gauge to set it perpendicular to the work. One other thing I didn't mention is that our thread thread tracing dial. Make sure that it's engaged into the lead screw, often it's pushed out. Now, we're going to be cutting 10 threads per inch so you can, or I can, catch this on any number or any line. Doesn't matter. All right, let's look at how I prepared the work. I've made an undercut here, and we're going to just uh, always set our tool in the undercut, and the depth of the undercut uh, needs to be at least uh, to uh, the minor diameter of the thread. I just kind of guessed at that. I put a chamfer on the end here. Now I put red layout die on here simply because I think it'll make this show up uh, a lot better because the material is white. I am perfectly perpendicular to the work with my cutting tool, and over in this direction I am at uh, on center. That's very important. 
I'm using a formed threading tool that I had in stock so I know it's a perfect 60 degrees you may have to grind one that's covered in another video the cross feed is set at zero and I will always cut when it's set at zero and then when we get to the end of the thread I'll back this off then I'll run the carriage back into that undercut and reset this to zero it doesn't matter what this uh, compound is set at but I'm always going to turn it about uh, a quarter of a turn if I said turn it in fifty thousandths you're not really going in fifty thousandths because we're at an angle of twenty nine degrees you'd have to do the math on that and I don't think it's necessary for this what I'm going to do is uh, thread until it comes until the redness disappears even on the crest of the thread then I'll stop and check it with uh, the nut we're not going to measure it in any other way it's good enough okay here we go I don't know if you can hear me over the machine but I'm ready to take the first cut I just engaged the half nut lever that's my first pass when I get to the end of the cut, I throw the half nut lever off, I back the cross feed out, I move the carriage back to the undercut, I move it, uh, the cross feed into zero, and the compound I'm moving up uh, about a quarter turn, and I'm catching the second pass. I think that red dye helps a lot in you seeing what I'm doing. I'm repeating what I just told you. A moment ago, this is Delrin plastic, it is flexible, that's why I have the work shortened up in the truck. position the camera. I put some fresh dye on the, the work. Take another pass now. The dye is still liquid so it's not all coming off. Finish that pass. for a second to the last. I turned the motor off and I'm going to try this now. I don't think I'm quite there. Yes, I am. That was only, what, six or seven or eight passes. Now there's still a little red on the crest there that there normally wouldn't be because I uh, put uh, liquid dye on there and it's still slightly liquid. And the nut goes right on. So that was Tubal Cane showing you how to make a left hand thread uh, in three lifetimes. I'm sure you won't need this but uh, it's fun just to explore the possibilities of what your lathe will do. This is Tubal Cane signing out again. So long.